Ooh, first up guys, huge, huge thank you to Stuart for covering last month's Witters episode. I really, really appreciate that. I was sick uh, out in Turkey, but I'm back in Wales, back in good health and ready for another month of astrophotography. I first met Stuart two years ago in the Insight Astronomy Photographer of the Year Awards and that is where I was two weeks ago because I had two images shortlisted this year, one of the zodiacal light and another of the International Space Station cutting across the front of the Milky Way. And both of the images were taken in the Elan Valley in mid Wales which is really nice to represent uh, home turf in what is a really international competition. So thank you to uh, the Royal Observatory of Greenwich, Sky at Night magazine and Inside for putting on such an amazing competition and award show because it really brings together so many like-minded people uh, and you get to catch up with old friends, you get to make new friends, put faces to names of the astrophotographers that I've been following online uh, and it's just a generally awesome competition. Uh, there's an exhibition in the Maritime Museum in, in Greenwich Park in London, very much worth checking out because it's celebrating 10 years of the award show. So. Um, if you're in London or you fancy visiting London, go and check out that exhibition. It is really, really mind blowing. But on to November, uh, the clocks have gone back here in the UK. So the nights are earlier, they're longer and they're getting colder, a lot colder. So the down jackets are on, the thermals are on. Now as winter's approaching, you can forget about Milky Way season. Don't get me wrong, there are still parts of the Milky Way available. So in the west, you'll see the Cygnus region and the rest of the Milky Way kind of spans over uh, through the zenith over the top of your head. But as Scorpio, the constellation that is in front of the Milky Way course sets in the west, Orion will rise in the east and there's a story in Greco-Roman mythology where Orion uh, is known as a famed hunter and in most cultures Orion is known as a hunter or at least a person. It's one of the constellations that actually looks like what it's supposed to be. Um, but Orion was a famed hunter and he was a little bit arrogant. He boasted about how no beast on this, in this universe could kill him. Uh, and so the spiteful goddess Hera sent a scorpion to teach him a lesson. And he, Orion managed to hit the scorpion with his club uh, and kill the scorpion, but not before the scorpion had stung him fatally. So they both died in the battle. They were both cast into the heavens, uh, but they were placed on opposite sides of the heavens so that they would never meet again. So the Scorpio sets in the west, Orion will rise in the east, and Orion is a really good target. But the stars in Orion are very big, they're very bright and just very recognizable. Um, and within Orion as well, there's a lot of hydrogen alpha emission nebula. So if you have an astro modded camera, you'll be able to pick up a lot of that beautiful pinkish red color of, of Barnard's loop. Uh, and if you don't have an astro modded camera, maybe you could do some tracking and unveil that color and detail in the, in the hydrogen alpha emission nebula. If you have a star tracker and a telephoto lens, maybe like a 70 to 200 or 135, um, you should be able to capture some nice images of the Orion Nebula, which is inside the sword, which hangs from the belt of Orion. Um, this is a, a star nursery where stars are born. It's a very beautiful nebula and quite easy to capture if you've got a star tracker and a 70 to 200, something like that. And the winter night sky is quite good for this sort of telephoto tracking. This month is also a really good month for the Andromeda Galaxy M31. Um, as well as Pleiades M45, an open star cluster. If you have a star tracker or you're thinking about getting one, now is a good time. Uh, and if you put a nice telephoto lens on there, do a bit of tracking, get long exposures of these deep space targets with, some, with a simple setup. Um, just be careful you don't end up buying bigger telescopes and bigger mounts. And, but if you have a star tracker and a telephoto lens, definitely worth getting out this month and enjoying the long, cold nights uh, and doing some tracking and, and stacking your images later on. So the best time to photograph these deep space objects is of course during new moon which is on the 7th this month so early on in the month and then we'll have full moon on the 23rd. There is a conjunction this month with Saturn so Saturn will be 1.5 degrees away from a crescent moon uh, on the 11th, on the evening of the 11th. So if we look to the south southwest, you'll see Saturn and the Moon very close together and it should be a good opportunity for a photograph. 
Talking of planets, let's take a look at the other planets. So, as you can see, Venus is right next to the Sun. Jupiter is also pretty close by. There it is. Um, so, no hope of capturing those two this month. But as the Sun sets, we should see Saturn popping up in the evening skies just there in the south southwest. And Saturn is currently in front of Sagittarius, which is uh, right next to the Milky Way core. You can just about see the Milky Way coming out there. Um, and Saturn will very quickly set in the southwest uh, in the late evening. So you'll be able to catch Saturn at the start of the month, but towards the end of the month, it'll be increasingly difficult to see it as it will set earlier and earlier every day. And if we continue into night, you can see Mars there rising into the southern skies. And Mars will start the month at a magnitude of minus 0.6, but then it dims to a minus 0.1. And if I show you the constellations, um, Mars will start the month in front of Capricornus, but it will make its way over to Aquarius by the end of the month. And that is it for the planets this month. There's really not much going on. So there are a couple of meteor showers worth mentioning this month. The Northern Taurids peaks around the 11th to the 12th, uh, but it only produces about five per hour. Uh, but it's doing a crescent moon, waxing crescent moon, so it's good observing conditions. But again, the rates are pretty low, about five an hour, but definitely worth still getting out there and um, trying your luck. A little bit better is the Leonids towards the end of the month. It peaks around the 17th to the 18th, and that should produce about 15 meteors per hour, but it is doing a waxing gibbous moon, so you will have to go out sort of uh, after midnight and stick it out until the early hours of the morning and try your luck. But better rates, uh, uh, less favorable viewing conditions, but still should be quite a lot of meteor activity this month. Now, with these long, cold, early nights, it's a good time of year to try some star trails. And you can even go out, uh, do an hour, two hours, maybe a three hour star trail, and be home in time for a decent night's sleep, uh, which we're probably not that used to. Um, but, and with these long nights as well, it gives you an opportunity to really do a long star trail, maybe seven, eight hours. Um, the good thing about this time of year is you do get those nights where the uh, the clarity of the night sky is very clear. You get these crisp, cold, dry nights uh, with no clouds in the skies and you just get to enjoy the winter night sky all night. So make sure you wrap up warm this month and get out there and enjoy the winter night sky. On to the hashtag Wittens. Now I know Stuart asked you guys to do get well soon images with lasers and light painting and all this stuff. Uh, lo and behold, nobody actually did that, I think. At least I, I didn't see any. Um, but I wasn't expecting you guys to do any. I've been flicking through the Witten's hashtag. There's some absolutely amazing stuff in there. Um, so if you get a chance, jump in on uh, Instagram and check out the Witten's hashtag. I'm just going to go through. I haven't really had a chance to pick out my favorites. Um, but I promise you next month I'll set a theme again and, and everything will be back to normal. I'll pick my three favorites and um, so let's see what we've got. Oh, I've seen this image before. This is Neil's. Yeah, just absolutely stunning. Look at that foreground detail and the lighting. I'm not sure where the lighting is coming from. Maybe it's light pollution, but it just makes that rock look so much more 3D. You've got a nice Milky Way above there. So that was shared by UK Night Photography. Um, but it's an image by Neil J. Burnell. I remember seeing this image a while back. Really, really nice image. Um, and that's pretty cool. A nice little moon alignment there. Oh, so I, I don't even know what that is. Um, but yeah, using a nice lit up object as a foreground to get that balance between the moon, which is really difficult. So nicely done, Phil Verney. Um, what else have we got? That's pretty cool. Getting, you know, a little bit creative. This image is pretty cool. It was it's UK Night Photography again, but I'm pretty sure it's Kieran Fallow's image. Um, nice little, I think it's tracked, shot of Orion there. Probably 50 mil, 70 mil, uh, with a nice little landscape foreground as well. Very similar to the vlog me and Adrian uh, did recently. So if you haven't checked that out, 
check it out. It's a really good vlog. Um, Phil Verney on the moon shots again. Um, and he was asking me the other day why it's not moon shaped and it's, uh, it's the distortion from Earth's atmosphere causing it to sort of wobble into a, a weird shape. Um, oh yes, this image I really loved as well. UK night photography, you're absolutely taking over the wins hashtag. Um, but this is an uh, amazing image from uh, Gaz, Googly Gaz, uh, cloud inversion in Snowdonia. He was camped above it. Surely very cold, but I'm sure the cold was the last thing on his mind. Nothing better than a cloud inversion. Um, ooh, UK night photography again, guys. <laughs> Did you want the hashtag? Shall I just give it to you? Um, an image by Keith Truman of Glastonbury Tour. I actually did a moonshot of Glastonbury Tour. It was probably the day after this, if this was this month. Um, I missed the day before full moon. I did it the day after when I was coming back from London. But that's a really cool alignment there. Um, and ooh, that's a really nice edit. The detail, noise free, ooh, 90s photography. Bit of a perfectionist in you, I think. Uh, yeah, guys, seriously, just check out the UK night photography. I'm going to need to stop clicking on you. Um, do check out the hashtag Phil Verney. That is awesome. ArcelorMittal Orbit. I have no idea what that is. We need to look into it, but that's a really awesome alignment. And to get the balance between the lights in the apartment, whatever this thing is, um, and the moon really good job so yeah check out the hashtag guys there's some amazing stuff in here i wish i could show them all but i'm gonna have to wrap up this video um this month i want to see your guys efforts at orion um any focal length be creative whatever orion is this month's target i'm gonna pick my three best this month we'll go back to normal yeah if you haven't checked out the last vlog i put up me and adrian doing a uh, super telephoto astro tracked selfies do check that out it's a really good vlog make sure to hit subscribe if you don't want to miss any content i've got one more vlog from la palma and the night at the telescope is coming up uh, which kind of went a bit wrong <laughs> uh, so make sure to hit subscribe if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon i wish you good luck and clear skies